Hello friends. In this video, we will study about energy meters, why they are used, what are the different types of energy meters, their applications, their construction, working, advantages and disadvantages. So here we will study that uh, what is energy meter and what are the various types of energy meters. So let us start with our topic. So energy meters they are used for the measurement of energy. So energy we know that uh, energy is measured by measuring the power over a period of time. Okay. Now the unit for power is watt and over a time we are measuring. So watt are meter. Energy meters are also known as watt are meters. So if we write the formula for energy, then energy is the integration of power with respect to time. Okay. So the unit for power is what and for time we used R. Like for 1 hour, what is the amount of power consumed? That will be the energy. So we can say that energy meters or the unit for energy is watt hour. And we can also say that energy meters are also known as watt hour meters. So what are meters or energy meters? They basically measures the amount of power consumed by the electrical products. So it basically measures the amount of electrical energy which is consumed by the products. So if we see its applications that where the energy meters are used so energy meters can be used in homes in industrial applications where we want to find out that how much energy is being consumed by the home appliances and the industrial equipment so it has applications in Energy is consumed by the appliances. Okay, so that is the use of the energy meters. Now we know that uh, here uh, the energy is what? It is the power consumed for a particular period of time. So when we are measuring the power for heavy loads, okay, because for a, some period of time we are measuring, so we already, uh, we take it in the form of hours, okay, and uh, for heavy loads when we are using these energy meters, then we have to use some uh, protection because uh, when heavy heavy current is passing through the energy meters they can be damaged whereas for low currents they can be directly connected with the instrument uh, means with the appliance whose energy we want to measure
we know that energy is the power consumed in a period of time so here we have taken that uh, the unit for power is what we have seen here okay and if we say that one kilowatt is equals to thousand watt okay so if we say that one kilowatt of energy uh, of power is consumed in one hour then that will be equal to one unit of energy okay so one unit of energy is equal to one kilowatt of power consumed in one hour so whenever we are measuring the energy consumed by the appliances in industries in homes and in organizations we measure the energy in the form of units okay now these energy meters they can be a single phase energy meters or three phase energy meters and they are divided into these two types depending upon that for what application they are used single phase means when they are used for the home appliances then single phase energy meters are used and for the commercial or the industrial applications the three phase energy meters are used now these single phase energy meters they are directly connected with the line whereas the three phase energy meters because uh, they are used for measuring the heavy amount of energy and heavy currents are flowing in the industrial equipments so to protect the instrument from those heavy currents then we have to use the current transformers there so energy meters can be of two types single phase energy meter and three phase energy meter so the these energy meters because they are measuring the power consumed so uh, they usually measures the instantaneous power and what we uh, how we calculate the power power is the product of the voltage and the current we calculate power by multiplying the voltage and the current that is v into i so this power which is calculated it is the instantaneous power okay so these energy meters they measure the instantaneous voltages and instantaneous current so we are getting the instantaneous power and this instantaneous power is integrated over a period of time to get the value for the energy so all the energy meters they work on the principle that they are going to measure the instantaneous voltages and the current they will measure the power and then this power will be integrated over a period of time to give the value for the energy now there are various types of energy meters and energy meters they can be classified into different categories based on various factors so let's see what are these factors on the basis of which there are various types of energy meters so the first factor on the basis of which the energy meters are classified is the type of display provided by the energy meter that whether the energy meter is giving us an analog output or the digital output so based on that we are having analog energy meters and digital energy meters
second is the type of metering point that from where we are doing the measurement whether it is the primary measurement or it's a secondary measurement means that at the same position uh, we are measuring the energy or at some other location so type of metering point Based on applications also there are various energy meters like whether they are used for the home applications or for the industrial or commercial applications. Also, we have seen the type of energy meters based on uh, technical views like whether they are single phase energy meters or uh, they are three phase energy meters that how they are connected with the line. Okay, so from technical. So there are various factors on the basis of which the energy meters are classified. Now here we will study the main types of energy meters. First we will study the electromechanical induction type of energy meter. This is the most common energy meter and it is widely used. So let us start with the electromechanical So this is the oldest type of the energy meter or water meter and it consists of a rotating aluminium disc which is rotating in the magnetic field of a permanent magnet. So let's see the construction of this induction type energy meter. What are its main components and what is the function of these components? So the main part of this energy meter is an aluminium disc. This aluminium disc is rotating in the magnetic field of two electromagnets. There are two electromagnets in between them there is an aluminium disc. This disc is mounted on a spindle and this disc is rotating in the magnetic field. So due to the rotation of the magnetic field the speed of the rotation of this uh, aluminium disc this speed is proportional to the power. If more power is applied to the instrument then more will be the speed of rotation okay and if less power is there then less speed of rotation will be there. Now we have calculated the power so now this part will be integrated over a period of time and then energy will be calculated. Now let's see its diagram so it will be clear to us that how this energy meter works.
the diagram for the single phase uh, induction type energy meter this is single phase type here the ac supply is of single phase okay now here you can see that it consists of two electromagnets one is the shunt magnet and other is the series magnet and in between these two magnets we are having the aluminium disc so this aluminium disc is rotating in the magnetic field and this the speed of rotation of this disc is proportional to the power which is consumed by the uh, appliance okay so let's see it's working that how it measures the power and then power will be used to measure the energy so there are two magnets series and shunt so in series you can see that it is uh, two coils are wounded over it and these coils uh, is called the current coil okay and this coil is having very few number of turns whereas on the shunt magnet we are having the pressure coil and this pressure coil is having many number of turns as compared to the current coil so series is series magnet it carries a coil and it is called series magnet because it is connected in series with the line whereas the shunt magnet it also carries a coil but this coil is having many number of turns and it is called shunt magnet because it is connected in parallel to the line okay or we can say that it is connected across the supply so it is connected in parallel whereas the series magnet is connected in series with the line now other than these two magnets we are having a brake magnet also brake magnet is a permanent magnet which applies a force which is opposite to the rotation of the disc so this brake magnet it is going to apply a force which is opposite to the rotation of the aluminium disc so when no power is applied to the circuit the disc should be not be rotating so this brake magnet is going to bring the disc back to its normal position or the uh, the uh, balanced position okay so because uh, due to when current is flowing in these pressure coils and the current coil here the current is the load current current which is proportional to the load is flowing to the pressure coils so due to the current flowing in these magnets they will uh, there will be a magnetic field and due to that magnetic field a emf is generated and this emf is going to rotate the aluminium disc and uh, because with this disc the pointer is being attached so whatever will be the speed of rotation of the disc that will be uh, pointed or we can take the readings from the pointer which is moving over a scale and this scale is calibrated to give us the readings of the bar so if we see it's working then series magnet it produces flux this flux is proportional to the current okay whereas the shunt magnet 
It also produces flux. And this flux is proportional to voltage. Okay. Now these two fluxes, because one flux is proportional to current, one is proportional to voltage. And for power, we require both voltage and current. Now these two fluxes, they are 90 degree in There will be a phase difference between this flux and that will be of 90 degree because here we are having the inductive flux. Due to inductive nature, the voltage and current, there will be a lagging relationship between them. Okay. Now, Due to the interaction of these two fluxes, there will be an eddy current generated and this eddy current is going to generate a force which moves the disc. So these two fluxes are generating the eddy currents due to the interaction of the two fluxes and these eddy currents are going to generate a force which moves the disc. Now to this aluminium disc, because this disc is connected on a vertical spindle or shaft, So as this disc moves and to the disc a vertical spindle or shaft is connected so that shaft is also going to move and to the shaft pointer is attached. So pointer is going to move over the scale and this scale is going to provide us the readings of the path. Okay. So we have seen that in this energy meters, the induction type energy meter, due to the movement, the current is flowing, the uh, current coil is also generating the flux and due to the voltage coil also, a pressure coil also, the flux is generated. And these two fluxes, they are in a 90 degree phase angle with each other. So phase difference can also be measured, okay? And the voltage and current values can also be measured because these fluxes are generating eddy currents. Eddy current produces force and due to force disc is rotating in the field. Okay. So, we have seen that the pointer due to the movement of the pointer over the scale and this scale is calibrated in terms of the power. We are directly getting the values of the power. Now this energy meter, because this energy meter, we want to find out the energy which is the power consumed over a period of time. So power we have get here, we will integrate this power for a period of time and then energy will be calculated. So these energy meters, the induction type, they are very simple in construction and they are accurate. Okay, but sometimes their accuracy is less due to the creeping action of the uh, aluminium disc because uh, due to the creeping and friction is also there so due to that uh, uh, if there are any external fields present so due to that also the readings will be affected so it is accurate but sometimes its accuracy is less due to creeping and the other external fields if we talk about its applications then it is commonly used in domestic and industrial applications so this is the first type of energy meter which is the electromechanical induction type of energy meter 
The next type of energy meters are the electronic energy meters. Energy meters are very highly accurate, precise and reliable as compared to the induction type of energy meters. Accurate. consumes less power and they instantaneously they start measuring the power when they are connected across the line so they start measuring instantaneously So these are the advantages of the electronic energy meters over the conventional that is induction type of energy meter. Now these electronic energy meters they can be of two types analog energy meters or the digital energy meters. So the difference between the analog and digital energy meter is that analog energy meters they do not measure the power directly. They convert the power into frequency and then frequency is measured. So indirect measurement of power is done whereas the digital they directly measures the power. Also the analog electronic meters they are going to give us the analog readings means pointer is moving over the scale so the observer has to take the readings from the scale whereas the digital they gives us the direct the digital output so direct reading will be given to us. So analog Whereas in digital meters, and after measuring the part, this part will be integrated over a period of time to get the reading of the energy. So these are the second type of energy meters that is electronic energy meters. Now third type of energy meters are the smart energy meters. These energy meters they involve some intelligent system and through that system we are measuring the power means that how much power is to be consumed by the appliance and what is the maximum level, minimum level, all is set by that intelligent system. So that is why they are the smart energy meters. So it involves intelligent meters which are reading, processing and feedbacking the data to the customers that this much power is being consumed, your consumption level has increased, you have to minimize it by this much value. So all this is provided by the energy meters. So here we can say that it measures energy remotely means that uh, uh, the uh, site area or the location where the energy is measured that is uh, being remotely located to the main site location okay so from a distance also and over a long distances the measurement can be done so it measures energy remotely
also it switches the supply to the customers and remotely controls the maximum electricity consumption so these are the intelligent system uh, which involves not only the taking only the readings but also processing that data and giving feedback to the customers that it has exceeded its uh, maximum consumption level so these are the third type of energy meters so here we studied about the energy meters which are used for the measurement of energy we saw that energy is measured by measuring the power over a period of time so uh, we uh, studied the various factors on the basis of which the energy meters are classified. Then we studied three types of energy meters. The first and the most important one was the electromechanical induction type of energy meter. After that we studied the electronic energy meters and the smart energy meters. So these energy meters measures the energy by measuring the power and integrating it over a period of time. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.